expressing units. Okay, so in this discussion, we're going to learn the units that go with various quantities. We're going to express them using their abbreviations, and we're going to make new units by combining numerical prefixes with units. So remember, in a previous discussion, we talked about a number indicating how much, and the unit indicates the of what. And so that of what is really important when communicating a quantity. So let's say that you ask your friend how close you are to Lake Erie, and your friend just says six. Um, you don't have complete information, do you? Because you don't know whether that's six miles, or six inches, or six city blocks, or anything. So, you know, so basically, you're kind of stuck, okay? The actual distance uh, depends on what units that you use. And so six miles would be obviously a lot different than six meters. Uh, so base, when we are expressing quantities, we want to make sure that we combine a number with a unit. And that's going to be all through this class. Numbers by themselves are relatively meaningless. We need our unit. Okay, so the SI, uh, which is the International System of Units, um, there are uh, seven fundamental units that are defined for various quantities. And um, these are used all throughout science, so it's really important to get familiar with these. We're going to focus on three fundamental units now, and then we'll add some others later. So our three fundamental units right now have to do with length, mass, and time. So length, our fundamental unit, is the meter. For mass, it's the kilogram. Notice that that is not grams, that's kilograms. And then for time, it's going to be a second. So here are just a few pictorial representations uh, relating a meter to yards, okay? So you can see that a yard is, um, you know, not quite a whole meter. So 0.9144 meters, that's the conversion there. Um, for mass, a kilogram is about 2.2 pounds. And for time, we all know that there's 60 seconds in a minute. That's one that we all know. We're already familiar. Now, SI also defines a series of numerical prefixes and those refer to multiples or fractions of a fundamental unit. And it makes that unit more conveniently sized for a specific quantity. So if we're talking about human hair, which is really, really, really fine, um, and we said it was 1.7 times 10 to the negative fifth meters, that's really kind of strange. I mean, that's inconvenient. It's a lot to write for a very, very small number. But if we use the micrometer prefix, then we could say that it's 17 micrometers. And one micrometer is one times 10 to the negative six meters. So that makes it much, much more, you know, easy to communicate our width of a human hair with uh, micrometers as opposed to meters. Now, um, we have multiplicative prefixes for SI units, and three of them are larger than the fundamental unit, and all of the rest of these are smaller than the fundamental unit. Okay, so a kilo, is a thousand of something, a mega is a million, and a giga is a billion. And, um, and then you can just see, you know, as we go through here, a deca, tenth, centa, one one hundredth, milli, one one thousandth, micrometers, we just talked about that, that's a millionth, nano is, is a billionth, and picos are 10 to the negative uh, 12. So very, very small. Um, and so all, like I say, all of these are, are much smaller and you're going to see milli, micro, and even nano um, fairly often in chemistry because we deal with a lot of small things. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to combine that SI prefix with the unit itself, and that's going to make a new unit, essentially. So, um, so let's look at an example. So one kilometer is 1,000 times a meter and that's going to be a thousand meters. So if we have five kilometers, then we're going to take five times a thousand because that's the definition of a, of a kilo, five times a thousand, and we're going to get 5,000 meters. All right, what about something that is smaller? So a millisecond is one one thousandth of a second. Um, if we have 25 uh, milliseconds, then we have 25 thousandths of a second, okay? So, you know, a little bit bigger 
than just the one millisecond, but still a very, very small quantity. Um, a kilogram is a thousand grams. Um, and so if we have 150 kilograms, then uh, we're gonna have to multiply a thousand times that 150 and we're gonna get, um, we're gonna get 150,000 grams or 1.5 times 10 to the fifth grams. You can see in this case that the kilogram is a much better unit for that quantity. All right, so SI also allows for derived units. And we're all familiar with area. So area is just defined as width times height. And those are both lengths. And they both have the fundamental unit of a meter. And so if we multiply a meter times a meter, we're going to get square meters. So that's what this m to the second power is, OK? And you can also have a prefix on your meters and still have the same thing. So you can have centimeters squared, you can have millimeters squared, or kilometers squared. Okay, so, so really, you can derive units with prefixes or, or no prefixes. Either way is just fine. Volume is another derived unit, and that's length times width times height. Okay, and since the units for volume are meter, then we're going to have meters times meters times meters, so meter cubed. So m to the third power is meters cubed. We also call that cubic meters. Um, now, if you take one one thousandth of a cubic meter, which is this up here, uh, that's going to be a liter. Okay, and just compared to the quart, you can see that the liter is a little bit bigger. So 0.94 liters is equal to one quart. Now. Um, cubic centimeters is actually related to milliliters, and that's a really, really handy thing to know, especially when you're talking about density. So another definition of a liter is one-tenth of a meter cubed, okay? And one-tenth of a meter is actually 10 centimeters. Um, if we cube it, we're going to get 1,000 uh, centimeters cubed. And, um, and if you're in the medical field or interested in that, you've probably heard of cc's. Those are cubic centimeters. And it turns out that one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter. So keep that in mind. That'll be very important. Um, and one liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. So 1,000 milliliters make up a liter, and one of those milliliters is equal to one cc or one centimeter cubed. So you can basically think of milliliters and centimeters cubed as interchangeable units. That can be very, very handy when you have liters and you won't need to get to um, lengths for some reason. Now, units can be multiplied together, but they can also be divided. And when we divide units, then we're going to get, you know, basically a, uh, a per you know, situation. So for instance, if we're traveling at one meter for every second of time, then our velocity is going to be one meter per second. So that's one meter per, which is that little uh, backslash, and then second. So the word per implies division. So velocity is dividing a distance quantity by a time quantity. That's what we have up here, meters per second. Um, other units for velocity, they don't have to be meters per second. They can be kilometers per hour. They can be micrometers per nanosecond. And um, we can see that other derived units will be expressed as fractions also. And that'll happen later on in the course. So just in summary, numbers tell you how much and units tell you of what. And you really need the units to make your number meaningful. Now, uh, we have a set of fundamental units and derived units from SI units, and so those are the f those are the correct units to use in science. Um, we also have a set of prefixes that represent multiples or fractions of units. And again, in chemistry, you're mostly going to be dealing with the fractions of units, although we do use kilograms and um, and a thousand milliliters to make up a liter very very often. Um, units can be multiplied and divided to generate new units for quantities, and those would be our derived units.